All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about what we can expect out of the markets heading into the future. We're talking over the next coming days, coming weeks, coming months. There's a lot that we need to discuss here in this video. And I want to talk about some of the moves I'm making in my portfolio, how you guys can take this really bad situation and turn it into uh, a massive wealth building opportunity so we're going to get into all of this information yes we are going to talk about our favorite stock here in this video as well but in the meantime hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section get your free stock with weeble mumu and public link down below in the description as well so let's talk about just briefly what it, what is happening today we've talked about that in basically every video we've made today briefly uh why the markets are falling but essentially it's because the markets don't agree with the fed the fed is saying everything is okay gdp looks good you know we're not expecting the unemployment rate to tick up we're not expecting bankruptcies the economy can handle quantitative tightening and raising rates and the data that we are getting just doesn't support that real estate bad data came out today bad uh weekly jobless claims numbers just bad data overall we had a negative contraction in the economy of 1.5 percent for q1 2022 we're not anywhere close to what the fed is projecting so the markets right now are saying hey the fed thinks this is going to happen the data is coming in like this the fed's going to push too hard make a bad decision that's going to push us into a deep recession and it's going to take a long time and a lot of pain to inevitably come out of that you are also seeing revlon that did officially file bankruptcy today so that is not helping the situation so that's what we're currently faced with as of today in what we do know yesterday the fed raised rates by 0 0.75 uh, basis points that was the largest rate hike increase in over 30 years now what happened yesterday is essentially the markets closed up uh pretty pretty well overall right the markets closed up the spy the s p was up over two and a half percent the nasdaq was up almost three percent well what are you seeing today the s p is down 3.22 percent so even though we rallied yesterday we are still at the lowest point now of 2022 we have given back all of those gains that we seen yesterday and this is exactly what happened at the last fed meeting which was may 4th and what happened the next day was pretty much the same exact thing is what is playing out right now so may 4th we ended up closing the day up 3.05 percent the day the fed raised rates by half percentage point a lot of shorts covering a lot of just that initial relief rally because the fear catalyst was gone and essentially at the last fed meeting the fed took 75 basis points off the table and just over the last two days the markets have went from not pricing it in to pricing it in we got that rate hike and that's also not helping things just showing that the fed is really uh willing willing to act more aggressively even if two days the markets go from not pricing it in to pricing it in uh, it, it's not a it's not a good sign okay but then the next day after the fed uh meeting may 4th what happened? The S&P dropped 3.55%, literally deleting all of the prior day's gains plus some. And then what happened from there? The markets fell another 0.60%, 3.2%, and then rose a little bit, 0.23%, and then did fall another 1.6%, and then did ultimately fall about another 2% at the low of the day, uh, May 12th, and then inevitably did almost recover all of those losses. So we did see from essentially the fed meeting uh potentially like where we are right now from the low to the low following uh a couple days after that was a decrease of about five percent so if something like that were to happen from where we currently sit as of right now that would put us roughly let's go down five percent that would put us roughly at the 346 level on the s p that's kind of what i expect to happen this time around i'm not a fortune teller i'm not going to stick my neck out on a line here but that would put us a uh, pretty damn close to the peak uh pre-covid that we've seen and that's ultimately in my opinion going to be the low of the decade around 325 330 on the s p uh, 500 so there is still a little bit of downside left over the next coming days and coming weeks in my personal opinion now we might bounce up we might bounce around a little bit it might take a little bit more time than not but i do think there is a little bit more downside we are also seeing crypto hedge funds getting margin called becoming um 
insolvent, even Celsius becoming essentially insolvent and you are seeing a lot of bad hedge fund news that is specifically coming out today and over the last couple of days hedge funds are selling stock at a record pace to meet these margin calls uh so on and so forth so once margin calls start like it looks like they are you're seeing a little bit more capitulation over the last couple of days that's when you start to get into no man's land you start to get those margin calls it starts to push the markets down to extremely oversold levels and then eventually you will see this it's kind of like a rubber band, right? You stretch a rubber band so far and it's slow. The process is slow. And then once it snaps back, it's like, boom, right? You're, you're going to see an eventual market rally, but it's going to come down to data because the Fed, if they can switch up within a day or two and essentially go from you know not being as aggressive to ultra aggressive if the data switches, maybe the economic situation gets even worse or maybe just inflation looks a little bit better that's where you're going to see which direction the markets are ultimately going to take i will say right now you are much closer to a bottom than to a top given the nasdaq is down uh about 32 and a half percent to start off 2022 so this has been a, the one of the longest lasting downtrends that we have seen in a very long time now with all of the fears of a recession you guys got to keep this in mind the bottom happens before a recession most of the time. So if we take a look at what actually happened during something like 2008, what happened with the federal funds rate when we actually went into a recession? Well, we went into a recession December uh, of 2008. And seven. If we take a look at the S&P 500, go back to 2007 in December. Let's see. It'll take just a second. December of uh, 2007. We were over here and it was quite rocky. It was a little bit different though because we were off a decent amount uh, from the highs once we did go into the recession draw a trend line down we were down about 10 to 15 percent uh from the high that we did see october of 2007 went into that recession just call it the beginning of 2008 the markets did crash this is what this essentially was this downward move and that was probably about 20 percent yeah, that was almost exactly 20% from the highs, which is a bear market. That's what you would expect to happen. Now, once we went into a recession, we probably would have bounced back out of it if it was not for the financial crisis in which the markets obviously dropped a lot more from the peak to the low, dropping about 57% on the S&P 500. Minus the financial crisis, we probably would have recovered a lot faster and just uh, you know, given when we went into a recession, you actually did start to climb back up after that until the financial crisis actually happened. And if you look at this and historical data over, you know, the last 50 years, when you go into a recession, usually that is peak fear. Usually there's a lot of fear about what could potentially happen. You know, the economy is never going to recover. It's going to take 10 years, so on and so forth. And then, the markets just sell off in anticipation of that and then the data starts to come in that's not as bad things do ultimately tend to rally from there so i do think once we go into recession it's going to be in 2022 it's probably going to be q3 q4 go into a technical recession and then likely in the first couple months of 2023 that's when you're going to see the ultimate bottom reversal and then we will start that steady up climb uh back to all-time highs now it's not going to be a v-shaped recovery we don't have the fed so don't expect something like this it's going to be more like 2008 uh you know taking quite a bit of time to ultimately get back to those all-time highs i believe it wasn't until 2012 where you actually did break out of a new all-time high that we set in 2007 so i do think that's very possible but there was a lot of millionaires that were created during the great financial crisis more millionaires are created during recessions than off of lottery winners by a long shot so if we do uh get a multi-year downtrend where it takes a long time to get back to all-time highs which i don't think it'll be quite that long that's where you want to accumulate these positions that's what i've been doing i've been buying a lot of stock in my favorite companies square DraftKings, paypal sofi uh 
Snapchat, a lot of other stocks, Spotify, you know, even Tesla buying into these quality companies and essentially building out positions, acquiring more and more shares each and every single week uh, to, to be in a, re a really good situation five, ten years from now when everything does bounce back with a fury. Uh, the markets are going to be in a much got hiccup stronger place once we do get through this shit show that we are currently seeing so that is the single best thing you guys can do as of right now now let's get into and talk about our favorite stock uh, for the day as well so our favorite stock is obviously going to be amc here on this channel we are down about 8.6 percent at the time of recording this video short interest of free float 22.91 percent cost bar max numbers have not moved around all too much at about 25 percent 118 million shares that are sold short 100 percent utilization free flow out on loan uh, about 38 percent option activity is bullish on the day of about 70 one percent so pretty interesting uh what's actually happening with amc stock uh as of right now nonetheless but i i, I do just want to say that hedge funds are not in a good position and when they're not in a good position when they are forced and, and faced with margin calls a lot of the time that's going to benefit stocks like amc that is going to help those stocks actually go up in uh share price and that's probably why you're seeing the cost borrow uh, minimums even going up to 15 percent because people want a, a lot of money essentially a, a lot of interest to actually lend out their stock 15 percent is definitely not a small number and that is just very substantial because when these hedge funds get margin called they liquidate positions they get out of position so if we're going to see all of these margin calls well shorts are going to have to get out of some of their short positions that could add a lot of bullish enthusiasm to amc at the same time whenever we get a catalyst here i think volume will head back into the stock and i think amc will do exactly what we have projected the stock to do but it can take some time so if you guys are worried about amc you're um down a lot which i know a lot of people are and you don't want to continue to dollar cost average i'm not going to blame you guys for that i don't care if you buy hold or sell but don't squander this opportunity you want to be a net buyer of stocks right now think about what warren buffett says be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful people are fearful you guys need to get greedy i don't care if you make your money off amc i don't care if it's any other stock but I want you guys to make money and I want you guys to profit off of this information. And that's exactly what we have been doing in the trading community. If you guys want to be a part of the action over there, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, get in that group link down below in the pinned comment. But it's free 99 to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as well. Also, virtually free 99 to get yourself some free stock. Deposit $100 and guaranteed get in between 4 and 10 free stocks when you sign up with Weevil, Mumu, and Public. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.